our, our next speaker is Dr. Natalia Hymas. Dr. Hymas is an assistant professor of uh, dermatology uh, here at University of Miami and Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. And uh, her talk today is to try to answer some of the most commonly asked questions uh, in the realm of dermatology, uh, particularly in, in, in what uh, is related to uh, skin cancers, particularly melanoma. Uh, Dr. Hymas. Thank you, Dr. Lati. Uh, what a great opportunity to be here. Thank you to AIM uh, at Melanoma Foundation. It's uh, and Sylvester, it's just a great uh, way to uh, provide information uh, that is gonna be useful and hopefully practical to everyone. And after Mary's talk, I think she just let everyone so relax, relax and now hope very focused um, to start now with some things about dermatology. So what I decided to do is start asking and not only asking, but what, I, what people and my patients um, ask. I would say at least once a day, I receive one of these questions. So um, you are, <clears throat> excuse me, you are all welcome to write any question in the chat and if we don't have time right now, we'll leave it to the end. So here we go with some of the most common asked questions in dermatology regarding skin cancer and in particular melanoma. And one that I had to put like the first one is I have been told that I cannot be anymore in the sun. So for, this is um, at heart and I, I know it comes a lot of things when you are first diagnosed and you have, you cannot be anymore in the sun. And turns out that your favorite thing to do is uh, be out in the sun, uh, do exercise or whatever water sport. So um, what I always tell uh, patients is you need to continue doing what you love to do. Um, and that will entail healthy behaviors and healthy behaviors include sun protection. So just very briefly, sun protection is not only being outside and not doing anything outside, it's just a broad thing uh, of measures that we can use. And I'm sure when I would say sun protection, the first things that comes to your mind is gonna be a bottle of uh, cream with, sun, with sunscreen. But it turns out that it's more than just a sunscreen is your sun protective clothing, your sunglasses, your hats, uh, seek the shade. If you can do what you like to do in specific times in the early in the morning, uh, later in the afternoon, evening, um, avoid tanning beds and obviously your sunscreen, then you should be good to continue. For each of those, there are specific things that we like to highlight. There are now sun protective clothing with, um, UV protection, sunglasses, try to make them to also cover large portion of your eyelids. And if you're doing exercise, you also have like those that cover your temples, your hats, uh, try them to be a hat, not a cap, so that your ears uh, can also be covered, the white brim around. Obviously seek the shade, try to find those times that are best for you. And the sunscreen, I'll just, leave a, another slide to just mention the sunscreen and obviously avoid tanning beds. Um, obviously this is another important thing that we forget when we are near water, sand, snow, also cloudy days. So just cloudy days gives us the, the sensation of being more, um, more fresh uh, and we forget to probably use all the sun protection measures. So always use it during the day. And um, so this is the next following uh, very common question, what is the best sunscreen? So before I get to the answer, let's say there are two big uh, groups of sunscreen based on their filters or components. So ones are the group of physical sunscreen where they just work like a shield. So you just, you put it on, on your skin and it just uh, deflects the sun rays. These are the two uh, filters, which are uh, zinc oxide and the uh, titanium dioxide. And it's best for those type of sensitive skin, uh, for those that already know the term rosacea. So that's a good one uh, that always you get red and stinging sensation. So these are the preferred ones. Also for kids, this is the ones uh, that we recommend. And chemical sunscreens. So there are many other ones. 
uh, that are that fall in this category and um, it's easier to rub in in contrast to the physical ones uh, without leaving that white uh, kind of color um, and there are many sunscreen that just have the combination of both because obviously they work different so um, which sunscreen so basically make sure that it ideally be broad spectrum meaning it will cover uva rays and uvb meaning the ones that make you sunburn and the ones that uh, will have like aging obviously both are in uh, related to skin cancer so but we want that it's uh, ideally broad spectrum spf 30 or higher and that is water resistant so I was saying uh, broad spectrum means just protecting from UVA, ultraviolet radiation A and B. And, um, and the B, remember, is uh, the one that makes a, a sunburn, right? And it's just uh, how much our UVB rays are filtered by the sunscreen. And, uh, but remember, there is not no true sunblock, right? There is not 100% uh, blocking the screen, uh, the sun. So water resistant means how long will the sunscreen stay and continue being effective on wet skin? And there are basically two ranges, 40 minutes water resistant or up to 80 minutes, uh, very water resistant. But that's why we always say apply 20 minutes before exposure, cover all exposed skin, uh, those that are receiving the uh, sun rays and um, don't forget to reapply. The one that we apply at 8 a.m. probably is not working at 12 or 2 p.m. And obviously after swimming or doing a lot of sweating, uh, so that's when we want to reapply. So which sunscreen, besides having that, is really, this is my answer. It's a personal choice. You will probably try a few of them until you say, I love this, I like how it smells, I like how it feels. So that's the one, because we know that's the one that you are gonna finally use and apply and there are many options out there and uh, but try to follow just these uh, three things and then just try try some until you get to the one that you really like so the other ones are sunscreen safe and this is a currently um question that is coming and so far i'm going to just make this um probably very short answer to a big um um, controversy that is going out there, but so far um, there is uh, nothing to really say don't continue using it. So sunscreen are regulated as over-the-counter uh, drugs uh, by the uh, FDA and as of today there is still, I mean, scientific evidence support um, that we can continue using sunscreen. So that will be uh, there are different ingredients, um, and as I already mentioned, um, so just the, some people prefer just the only physical ones um, because it doesn't get absorbed, so it goes in preference. There are ones both, um, so it's just what your preference and your personal choice is. There was one, um, the FDA final rule on sunscreen, which was um, the FDA uh, issued a proposed rule that asked uh, the industry to provide additional data about safety of some sunscreen ingredients. But due to COVID, this was supposed to be done last year, but due to COVID, uh, then this um, new uh, final rule on sunscreen is supposed to be um, later in September this year. And in theory, industry has one year uh, to comply to that new rule, or it, they are probably going to grant uh, for innovation, um, uh, pro, uh, like new things they that, that they can come out, uh, 18 months. But in essence, this is like the short answer to that one. Now, um, just moving a little bit more, now when patients come in and they now are thinking in their families, may I have another one? Um, so is melanoma curable? And uh, the answer is yes. And this is uh, where it comes, what I uh, do the most, which is prevention. And the, the answer is, if we detect early and we treat it appropriately, it, it can be cured. And I'm sure Dr. Latsky and Janelle will be talking about the new horizons and the great things that are happening in later stages, like stage four static melanomas. Uh, but 
what I do is now uh, prevention. So if we detect early and treat it appropriately, we can talk about cure. So how can I detect it early? That's another, like, okay, fine. Uh, I have my family member. Uh, I have two family members with melanoma. So my risk is high. How can I detect something early if anything is too happy? And I put here teamwork uh, because I like to say, okay, it's not only, don't leave everything to the health providers. And this is, I think, one of the things we're trying to do today. It's all about the patient also. So it's you starting to get to know your skin. And that's why I say teamwork. You will do your self skin exam once a month. And if anything is near changing, then you let us know. Uh, and that's also um, part of how we work together. And then you will, uh, patients will have their regular uh, dermatology visits, depending on their risk. Uh, it could be every three, six months, three, six months, 12 months, or once a year. So it will depend. So this is a key component, and this is for everyone. So we all should do a self-skin examination every month, regardless. It's getting to know your skin, getting to know your moles, your spots, everything. And um, what do I look for? And this is special, a very common question, especially for patients that have many moles. And the thing is, basically, there are two things that we want you to remember, anything new or anything changing. But obviously, in order to know what's new and what's changing, you need to know what you have, right? And um, here comes something that many patients know about, which is uh, total body photography, mole mapping, same thing. And we encourage uh, for those who have total body photography that use their pictures during their self-skin examination because that's gonna be their reference. Uh, if they are not sure if this is new, if this is changing, then you have your pictures. Oh, this was there, okay, I'm reassured. Or this is definitely new, so you will give us a call. And new is not something that comes and goes away in one week. New is something really that comes and stays, it stays for more than three or four weeks. And especially if it keeps coming, and sorry, if it keeps uh, growing, right? Okay, so once you find something, then you want to let us know. Uh, and then we'll take a look at it. Maybe something benign, a benign growth like cassiorrhea keratosis and all this good, or maybe it's a uh, skin cancer. And for that, we have different tools. We use um, dermoscopy, which is like the dermatologist or many primary care physicians stethoscope. So we use it to look at the skin. And it's just, uh, it allows us to see things that are underneath the skin that we are not able to see with our naked eye. As I mentioned, we use total body photos. Uh, we use other imaging techniques that uh, just allows us to in increase our diagnostic accuracy and try to detect anything very early uh, where we can just uh, remove and that's it. Okay. And, um, and with that, I think that was, uh, here is just to show you one example. So this is a patient that is being followed, uh, previous history of melanoma. And uh, this is the one picture of his total body images. And only on follow-up, we are able to detect these very early um, new melanoma. And what's just because of change, change in his mold, in that mold. Um, so with that, I want to thank everyone again for the opportunity and um, I'm happy to answer any question if we have time right now. If not, uh, we'll just leave it to the end and hopefully we have more questions that I keep growing and these most commonly asked questions. <laughs>